How many of you guys like are in college? It looks like most of you are about college age. <laughs> and I see one hand raised. Are you guys parents or grandparents? Okay. Um, and like, are your kids like in college or like go about to go to college? Like, how many people have kids in college? How many people are about to go to college? Well, what about the other kids? <laughs> are they like younger or like? Oh, okay. Okay, well that's not too old. Um, so I was uh, diagnosed when I was nine. Um, I went to school at uh, George Mason University uh, in uh, the DC area. Uh, and originally I was uh, majoring in computer science, uh, but had, uh, halfway through switched my major to film uh, because uh, I guess it was kind of boring to do computer science all the time. And also like, I'm sorry about that. That's not my fault. It's like a, a technical issue with the microphone. Um, I, I feel like I'm, I'm like too embarrassed to go anymore after that happened. Um, <laughs> see, look, see, I'm gonna like. <laughs> um, anyway, uh, basically, uh, I feel like college for me, at least, uh, the most important part of college was not the academic part, which you know I did. I went to school and like I got grades that were good enough to like graduate. I guess I don't know. I, I, maybe I got really good grades. I forget. Um, but what what for me was the most important part of college. Uh, not because the academics are not like really important, but just because like for me at least like the academics was just sort of the thing like okay you just like do your homework like etc. The most important thing for me was sort of like growing and like learning to live independently and and all of that I think really helped me more than like any of the classes I took honestly. Um, and I I don't want to like you know like diss college because if I hadn't gone to college I would have never you know I mean college really changed my life. Um, I went to school that was really big so uh, I worked really hard to try to make friends and, and 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 it was great because unlike high school where if you like you know like said something stupid people didn't like you after that the same thing happened in college but you could just find another group of people who didn't even know that other group um, <laughs> you think I'm joking but I'm not it's actually what I did um, and then eventually I just learned what to say and what not to say and that really helped me the most uh, dorm life uh, I would say uh, I would say dorm life is uh, also another uh, important aspect of it. I don't think it's a good idea to uh, to just stay at home because I think that the whole like idea of living independently is like it's sort of a stepping stone to like living on your own. And while you guys might be afraid that your kid's not going to be able to do as well or like won't do anything when they're alone and don't have you to help them, uh, the only way they're going to actually do stuff on their own is if you're not there to help them. So I mean, keep that in mind. I mean, people send their kids off to college for a reason, and just because they have autism doesn't mean like they're not going to have the same, like, benefits, you know, like, because, like, a lot of kids without autism are, like, completely helpless, like, in, you know, in high school, and they go off to college, and they end up, you know, living independently, so. Um, I, don't, I would say that dorms, though, like, at least for me, like, I, I can't, couldn't really, like, deal with, like, having other people in my room, so I just requested a single room. Um, so just, like, you know, like, get, get a dorm that you don't have to share with anyone. Um, I don't. I, I guess maybe that like I don't know what they do here, but I think that like you know nowadays like they're going more and more towards you get your own room because uh, I know that every new building that they built you get, it was in like single rooms and like you know like a common area and like a you know either two or four bedroom little apartment thing. So try to get that. Um, your plugs are important, I guess, if you're on one of like the party floors, which I think is like most of the floors. Um, uh, your plug is the white noise machine. Uh, all this stuff's really important transitioning. I mean, like, eventually you'll start to get used to it, but at least you can't just, like, jump in and, like, expect to, like, be able to sleep when there's, like, music all the time um, and people, are, like, going crazy. I mean, it gets better when, you know, you're later, later on. Um, I'd say the most important thing, at least for me, uh, in terms of, like, finding jobs and, like, getting, uh, getting work and stuff and, like, living independently and supporting myself. I mean, obviously I have the website, so, I mean, I sell ads on there and that, that supports me, but, like doing other stuff as well, like, uh, I worked a lot of different jobs, but the way I got jobs was not, like, having the best resume or anything like that, it was just, like, having the best interview, and, like, you know, being really charming, so, like, you just have to practice, like, and it's not that hard, because all you have to do is talk to them for, like, however long the interview is, and then you can stop pretending to be charming anymore, um, but, like, honestly, like, a lot of kids think, oh, you know, I have, like, straight A's, I have, you know, all these skills, that I'm going to get this job, they go in there, and they lose it to some guy who doesn't even know what they're doing, but they have better social skills. So ideally you would be both, but I mean, I think that 
if you don't have any social skills and like they don't like you, but you're really good, you're gonna not get the job. But if you don't have any skills, like technical skills for the job, you could still get the job even if, if you're social. So, so think about it that way. Um, that's really important to think about. Um, another thing that, that helped me was uh, just practicing talking to people. I would always like, I would just like make it a, a, a practice of me to like talk to as many people as I could in one day. Or like, I'd be like, I'm gonna say hi to 20 people and then I'd be like, I'll have a conversation with 20. Well, that might take maybe like 10 people because you know, saying hi takes less time. But you know, if you force yourself to do that, you know, because you need to meet people in college to really make the experience worthwhile. I mean, if you're just staying in your dorm room all the time, like by yourself, it's not going to really help. So, I mean, I really think encouraging your kids to, to really go out and try to be social and join clubs. That's like really important so you can like get forced to meet people. Um, and, and choose a major that like you like doing, not something that you think is going to make money. Because you're not going to make money doing something you don't like doing if, because, like, people like us, like, don't do what they don't like doing. Like, I mean, like, when I get, like, obsessed about something I'm really interested in, like, yeah, I'm going to work on that. Um, even if that, like, even if, you know, even if I had studied to be, like, a, I don't know, what, what's, do accountants make a lot of money? No. Um, I don't know if I had studied to be, like, a, no, that would be kind of be fun. I'm just trying to think of a job that, like, makes a lot of money, but, like, I wouldn't really do the work for it. And I can't really think of any because a lot of those jobs sound fun. Oh, no, something... Yeah, no, I don't know. Anyway, so like, I apologize. I, I thought I had a point here. Um, basically, I would say pick a major that's like your obsession. Like, if you're obsessed with video games, do video game design. If you're obsessed with like film, like, do film. Like, I majored in film and I, I you know, I, I really enjoy doing that. And also, I feel like it's good to pick something that, that forces you to be more social. Because if you, if you do something that you're always in a cubicle or like by yourself, you're not gonna learn to get out of your shell. And while that might be, some people may be happy with that, I personally was not. Uh, another thing that was really important in college for me was uh, the idea of making sure that the professors knew what was going on with me and like the issues that I had turning in assignments late. Like I was like really bad at like turning assignments in on time. Um, and like, it's funny because in high school they're like, oh, you'll never get away with turning stuff in late at college. But it actually turned out to be the opposite. Like, it was way easier to like turn in stuff late as long as you like discuss it with the teacher. Like, they had like this thing called an incomplete where you can finish your like thing if you didn't like do the work. Um, so, <laughs> I'm not like advocating that, but um, I, uh, yeah, I, and I would, you know, I would be, and also they have disability services offices, but like sometimes it's like more of a pain in the ass you have to deal with them because like you have to fill out paperwork to take tests. And there's one time like, they were like, you have, to, I was like, hey, I need to take a test with you guys because I need extended time. And they're like, well, you didn't fill out a, a test form. And I'm like, well, I can fill one out now. And they're like, no, it has to be done in advance. I'm like, well, it's a pop quiz. How am I supposed to know that there was a quiz? They're like, it doesn't matter. Like you, you have to follow the, uh, the rules. So I, I just, I, w I would go up to the professor and just be like, listen, you, you and I both know that there's a lot of red tape involved with the disability office, um, and you know that I, I'm entitled to these services, so why don't we just like work something out? And the, the professors usually, I mean, for the most part, they'd be like, oh yeah, I hate them, like they, it takes, I don't have to deal with that. Um, and, and like, that's not true about all disability services. I mean, they, 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 they're, they're very helpful in, in a lot of senses in sh getting, making sure you have what you need and stuff, but like, Halfway through my college, they got a new person to replace the old one, and it was great before, and then, like, sh the, this guy didn't even know what autism was. He was, like, only knew about physical disabilities, which was weird. Um, so he was only concerned about, like, making more wheelchair ramps on the school, and I think he just focused all on, on that, which, you know, is, is, is admirable, but it didn't really help me. <laughs> so, I mean, yeah. Um, oh, and uh, finding a job. Uh, internships are really important because you, you learn, because uh, you can like, I don't know, I think you should just, you should go to like those career fairs and just like talk to the people that are recruiting. And if you're like, if you're like charismatic enough in front of them, like, they'll like, they'll just like tell the people that, that are like hiring you to like, that they have to hire you. Like that happened to me one time. And like, I got a cool job. And, and also it's good because you're not gonna like, especially people like us, we're gonna like be socially like inept. So you're gonna have to like fail and like not, and like it's better to fail, like not do as well, and be weird at an internship than like an actual job, you know? Like cause they, they sort of don't like keep as many tabs on you at an internship in a way, um, other than like if you're like bringing them coffee or whatever, but.
which I didn't have to do. I did like a I did an IT internship at like a production company, which was cool because that like sort of like bridged my interest in computers into the uh, interest <coughs> in um, in uh, uh, film. And now I work on a TV show, which is cool. And honestly, like, I, and maybe I'm wrong, but like like. Most of the people there seem to have, have like autism and don't even know. Like, they're like all like like scattered and like like especially the writers and like and the actors too. Like all like I'd say that like a, a large number like more more than in regular life uh, on on these film sets. Um, so it's fun and I I fit in there a lot more and and uh, they even let me act on the show now. So I like have a recurring character on the show, which is really cool because you get like they pay actors like a lot per day. So, but I only, I only act like for like very, not that many days, but then you get, apparently get residuals or something, like, which I'm like looking forward to because they like pay you every time it shows. Um, and all you, all you have to do is like do what I do every day, which is, I, to, I mean, to act normal in like real life, I just have to act. So it's like, seems pretty easy. You just have to memorize the lines and say them in a way that you would say them in real life. Um, so that's cool. Um, that's a really good, the arts I think are really important. Exercise is important. I'm, I'm, I only have 15 minutes. Usually I talk for like an hour. So I, I'm trying to condense this and like cut out stuff. Um, I mean, I, I hope that you guys are getting uh, good information from me. Um, but uh, yeah. I, have, I have like three minutes left. I have a timer set, so I'm going to keep talking. Um, yeah, so like that's cool. And also I think going online, trying to find other people like you is good. Uh, learning social skills really important. Um, College. What else is there? Um, yeah. Does anyone have any questions? Can I can I say that I'm allowed to ask for questions? You said that you usually don't do questions. Could I? Could I, I have two minutes left, so could I have two questions? You said personal life. Yeah. Who's have? I have three minutes and thirty seconds. Oh, so here's how, like, what, I, my, what my approach was, and it seemed to work out pretty well, and, like, I, oh, oh, sorry, the question was, how do you get a girlfriend, and, and what I found is you just have to ask out a lot of girls, and there's so many girls at college that, like, at least one of them will say yes. Um, I mean, I, you don't ask every girl, but, like, all the girls that you would, like, want to date, um, uh, and then at least uh, more than one usually would say yes, so... No, it's true though. Like, and and I, I actually that was another thing. I, I didn't know how to get a girlfriend, so I just studied uh, guys that were really good at like you know picking up women and like you know like these like guys that like would always have a different girlfriend every day. And uh, what I found is that they would just like ask out every girl or like hit on every girl. So like I just like practiced that myself. And I mean I wasn't as effective as them, but it was like at least pretty effective. You know, I, uh, that was helpful. And then and then but then keeping the girlfriend is even harder. So, <laughs> But, uh, uh, and one more question. Yeah? You're totally, I mean, it's proactive and just like you seems like you're very good at self-advocacy and determination, like practicing and getting yourself out there to conversations. Like, was there a point in your life where you said, I'm going to start doing these things to yeah. enable myself? And what, what brought you to that realization? Because a lot of kids on the spectrum are not... Well, so here's here's what I found. Like I was like the opposite of this, like before, and it was because I was afraid of being rejected, like in social situations. And then I realized that it doesn't matter if people reject you, because like that's just a way to learn. And like no, first of all, people will reject you even if you do everything right. If you say the same thing to like eight people, you're gonna get eight different responses. Some people like love you. Other people will be like, get the hell out of, you know my, you know, you know, get get the hell out of my personal bubble or like. Even if you're not that close to them, like they might just be go away. Um, so you, so you just like, and I always treated like social stuff as just sort of like, you know, as I just talked to as many people as possible, and failure I just thought was an inevitable part of it. So um, that was the way. That was the thing that switched my mind. So like, does that make any sense? Like, is, if you can, if you can con conceptualize that, and this is the last thing I'm going to say, if you can conceptualize, if you can understand the fact that, like, everyone gets rejected socially. And if you look at that rejection as a good thing, that means like, it's like, oh, that's good that I got rejected because if I hadn't said anything at all, I would be just where I am right now because I would have never talked to that person. So that's it. Like, I mean, that's sort of, sort of the uh, idea. Um, I hope that was helpful, you guys. Yeah.